Previously, on Orgasms Not Excluded. Not very skilled person can actually get through this spine here. And then you need to pump out the gas inside it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. what the f <laughs> They're actually able to dig so far into space. And there you go. They're in space. Ta da! What's up, mother lovers? Simpy Boy here. Today's episode tackles the magma biome that's on top. Fundamentally, all you need is the typical steam turbine power plant. In a normal game where the lava is on the bottom, you would just need a heat spike in order to achieve this. But because the lava is on top on this map, you would need to have a gravity-fed solution. Frankly, you don't really need an aqua tuner because the map is really cold and you can survive without it for a long time. The biggest issue with this is that you have to time the lava so that it doesn't come down in one big splotch and uh, cause a jam up on the uh, mesh tiles. Like that. Ugh. The reason is simple. This allows you to use oxygen's diagonal teleporting feature. This keeps the hot igneous rocks in the steam turbine steam room. Now how do you limit the magma drops? The first thing to do is to avoid vertical drops. The second thing is to use a timed door. You could build a more efficient machine by using a conveyor rail to split up the igneous rocks and also to collect them for hatches or whatever you need. However, this isn't completely necessary. In a real world game, which I will proceed to show after this, I built a very simple machine that works but does not have all the uh, special features. And do you need such a long column from the top to the bottom? You really don't. This is just because I was in sandbox mode and had a lot of freedom, but in the real world, you would probably build the column much closer to where you were. And so here you have a real world setup. Frankly, I have to tell you, man, sandbox mode made it so much easier. Real life is just too hard. The problem about the real world is that there's scarcity. I don't have unlimited materials. I don't have unlimited steel. I don't have unlimited obsidian, which are necessary in uh, this setup. Fundamentally, the first thing you'll do is to build a liquid lock so that you can suck all the air out from your steam turbine chamber. Pro tip, don't be an idiot like me. Start with as small as possible of a space because this took forever, in fact five ever, in order to get all the air out. I got impatient so I immediately started building even without all the oxygen and other gases sucked out. Now you might be wondering why there's this horizontal uh, floor. And that's because we want to ensure that the lava can be controlled. Ideally, you would have a floor of 10 spaces from the place where your lava is going to drop down from the top. That will give you the best chance of having a easy management of the lava's quantities when you have a magma drop. Just to note that if you can build the floor with insulated tiles, you probably should, but it has to be obsidian, which I was lacking, and that's why I'm building it with regular tiles. Now, unlike sandbox mode, you're putting your dupes at risk every time you try to mess with the magma, as you can see now. So the real question is, how do you get the magma out safely? The first thing to do in terms of safety is to ensure you use a material that can withstand the heat from the magma, which is about 14 to 1500 degrees. Two materials come to mind, steel or wolframite, which is available in the cold biome of the flip asteroid. Now, as you have seen from the previous video, I goofed and I let out a whole bunch of magma. The solution to this is to build diagonally, as you can see here. There we go. We can open stuff up without having magma fall all over my map. Now, the next thing to do is to build a door at the far end of your floor. At the same time, build two mesh tiles, stack them on top of each other, made of wolframite or steel. Then, surround your chimney with uh, insulated tiles of obsidian. It must be obsidian. In order to get igneous rock to teleport diagonally, you must leave a space like this. By the way, do not forget to build automation wires of steel to your mechanical doors. Once you have a vacuum, you can get rid of a gas pump if you want. This is optional, but I'm filling this tile up with water and it also has a temp shift plate. The reason for this is because I believe steam and a temp shift plate make for much faster heat transfer. Definitely better than a vacuum. Now once that's done, I just reseal the tile. What the dupe is building is actually a way to control heat transfer by using a door. So when the uh, temperature hits 200 degrees, which is the max a steam turbine can take, the door will open and deny any heat transfer. And once the temperature drops below 200, the door will close, thereby allowing heat transfer from the uh, hot igneous rock. 
As you can see here, the steam turbine is going in and I did not build an aqua tuner here. And it's simple. There are a lot of ways to cool the steam turbine down. You just also have to lay a, uh, what's it called? A tile, a few tiles of water that will allow you to transfer uh, heat in a vacuum. We're getting close to the finale. I'm just going to install a switch so that I can open the mechanical door above. Fill her up, boys! Now we just have to set the timer for the second mechanical airlock, which would be the one that would dispense the uh, magma into the chamber. I like to give it 3.8 seconds on the green signal and then about 40 seconds on the red signal. You could put less time on the red signal. The only risk is that if the magma that you've dropped previously hasn't cooled, you will have a glut of magma and that will probably be solved by just reloading uh, old save game. Now the next question is how do you cool the steam turbine when you do not have an aqua tuner which would usually supply the cooling liquid. And the way I do it is just by using gas. Uh, this gas goes in a loop and what it goes to is also a very cold area in the map of which there are a lot. Um, this gives you free cooling without the need for a very uh, power hogging thermal aqua tuner. Building some temp shift plates also really helps. As does a smart battery that shuts off the generator when it's full. So this generator here is producing maximum power of 850 watts, all powered by the magma biome that's on the flip asteroid. You could make this more efficient by building a conveyor rail, but this setup has proven to be able to produce maximum power. Now there are probably more ways to make this more efficient, and one of the ways I can think of is to use this as a crude oil refiner. So Instead of using this to power the steam turbine directly, you would first use the heat from the igneous rock to power the uh, crude oil, uh, heat it up, and then take the heat from the petroleum and send it into the steam turbine's room. That way, not only do you get power from it, you also get uh, petroleum. All right, all my mother lovers out there, make sure to like and subscribe because one like equals one prayer and one subscribe equals 10 prayers.